talking about? Oh. The gravity of the visual curve. Curve mirrors? Concave mirrors? Properties of images. We've drawn an image. We've drawn a picture. We had our concave mirror. We had a focal length. For the second one, it did. I want to go back to the, to the first one we did, where we had an object out here. I'm, you have this in your notes. But what did we end up with? Uh, upside down. Upside, upside down. And where? It was on, on the, the other side. Of on the bottom. On this side of the mirror or the other side? This yeah. side. The real Good. side. The real side. And that's the thing I want to show you first off today. It was bigger. Outstanding. We're going to do the paper. It's going to be great. I'll be honest with you. Light is a part of physics that's not intuitive to me. It always seems a little bit like magic. Um, so when we do this calculation and the, or we do draw this picture and it says it's going to make a real image, I don't really believe it. Okay? Because that just seems like witchcraft. It actually is true. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to determine... And determine the focal length of some concave mirrors. And in doing that, we're going to see a real image produced on a piece of paper. So, finding focal length. If you have a concave mirror. Okay. Any thoughts about how we could find the focal length of a mirror? How do you do the breakdown? Measure what? Okay, so we need to measure the distance from our mirror to the focal point. Outstanding. Which one of those is easy to find? I would think the mirror would be the easier one to find, right? Where is the focal point? Okay, fantastic. A quarter of the diameter. So if we look at one of those spherical mirrors we handed around last time in class, can you tell me what the diameter of that spherical mirror is? Probably I'm going to take that as a no. So we need some other way to find the focal point. What else do we know about the focal point? It's where the, the light, what the light, all of the light, 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 light bounces back, back into it. Perfect. The light the bounces lights. back into Does all light always bounce into the focal? No. 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 What kind of light? Reflective light. More specifically? White light. Parallel to the... Parallel to the, <laughs> the principal, principal, principal axis. Line. Perfect. When light rays come in parallel yeah. to the principal axis, they bounce off the mirror and reflect through the focal point. So how do we get a light source with parallel light rays? If it's far enough away. It has to be far enough away. Okay? The sun is a great example, but that's not going to work so well with, with our activity today. As it turns out, anything, if you're looking for a focal length that's like in, you know, a do couple dozen centimeters, anything that's several meters away will work well enough to find a focal length. So we're going to use that tree out the window. You're going to find six concave mirrors, three big ones, three small ones. You're going to find some little white cards. We're going to turn the lights off and open the blinds. And what I want you to do is try to find the focal length of the mirror. Do you feel like you have enough information to do this? No. Good, you're not supposed to. All right? So let's figure it out as we go along. We're going to open the blinds. Each, each group, work in your new lab groups, needs to get one of those mirrors and one white card and see what you can figure out. All right? Okay. You also need a, you also need a ruler. Okay. Go. Oh. Just one of those rules. Anything that measures in centimeters will do just fine. Find the focal length of your mirror. That's all I told you. This way? Mm -hmm. Good. Good start. Way to jump in and try something there. Get a little closer. Stand up, Andrew. You gotta actually. There we go. Okay, but you're at the right. You're at the right idea. 
Run, you know what you're doing? I do now. She just told me I was right. You're on the right track. On the right track, or more or less. Oh, it's like the tree. You see the image on the moon? Yeah, it's a Okay. Look at the window. Look at the window itself. Not through the window. Yeah. The tree is right there. So it's like it's upside down. So would the pin point be at the base of the tree? But don't use the don't use the don't use the surface of the window itself. Didn't you just say to you? No, I just, that's where I wanted you to look to see what you're supposed to be seeing. Put the card in front of the mirror. <laughs> Move the card back and forth. Move the card toward the mirror and away from the mirror. Oh, wait, hang on. What are we trying to do? <laughs> what are we doing? Listen to Bethany. Yeah, that's it. But I mean, it's, 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 it's part of the spot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do you see it? There's the tree. I don't know why it wasn't. I guess we didn't have it close enough. All right, but you see it now, right? Yes. All right. It needs to be landscape. What do I mean when I say landscape? Sideways. Sideways, so like this instead of like this. That's how you'll have enough space. Take our focal length is 7 centimeters. Our object distance is 12 centimeters. And our object height is 2 centimeters. When you get this done, check with your partner. Make sure everybody's pictures look pretty much the same and pretty much like what I have on the board. Mine's not to scale, obviously. Are you sure that you can take it? Mine looks better than yours. Yeah, CC's looks good. Yours sucks. Be supportive. Three nice things, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say anything mean to her. I said something bad about her paper. Say three nice things to the paper. I'm not going to talk with the paper. All right. In order to find the image. Anybody having problems out there? Are we all ready? She's struggling. You going to be okay, Desmond? It happens. All right. What do we have to do to find our image? We have to draw the lines. The, the first line we drew yesterday was called what? The principal ray. Principal ray. Every light ray as it comes in goes through what? The top of the object. Top of the object. Okay, on the tree thing, I mean, how do we know which lines happened? Like, how do we know? Oh, because all of them happened. They That's are. a good question. Oh, like, okay. almost an infinite number of light rays oh, came from the tree, <coughs> bounced oh. off the mirror, and then formed the image. We just picked two. Oh, okay. Since they're all going to converge on the same point, we can draw any pair to find out where the image is. I don't know if, like, some happened. Some Everything that wasn't blocked by the paper, <laughs> right? Like, you're going to cut off some of it when you literally put the little piece of paper in place, right, but other right. than that, they're all there. All right, so every light ray as it comes in needs to go to the top of the arrow. What else do we know about the principal ray? It's parallel, parallel to the parallel principal, the principal axis. axis. Okay, so take your ruler. If you're going to have a better chance making it parallel if your ruler is above the principal axis as opposed to if your ruler is covering the principal axis. You understand what I'm telling you? Yes. And draw your line as parallel as possible. When does it stop? When it hits... The, the, theoretical the invisible theoretical line behind the mirror. It doesn't matter if it lines up with the edge of the paper. We don't care about the edge of the paper. Just make sure everything's parallel to that principal axis and it'll be great. <coughs> All right, when light hits a mirror, what's it going to do? Reflect. It's going to bounce. It's going to reflect. Through the focus. Why? Because. That's what you said. Okay, but why? Science. Do all, about, do all reflecting the, rays bounce the, with the principal the center, No. The well, the focus points the, the center. It's also correct. Say it again, Katie. If it's parallel to the principal axis, then it. All the light rays that come in parallel to the principal axis go out to the focal point. Only light rays that are parallel to the principal axis go out through the focal point. Okay? So this one goes out through the focal point because it came in parallel. So we start from where it hit that imaginary dot, that imaginary line, and we draw the line through the focal point and draw it out a pretty good long distance. The more careful you are with these steps, the better your final picture is going to work. All right, so the point where those two lines cross should be kind of over here, right? We should all have pretty much the same point. That's going to be our image. How do we finish the image? What do we, what do we need to have at this point? Draw an arrow. An arrow. So how do we draw the arrow? A line and then a triangle. Just a line from the principal axis up to the point where they meet. I wouldn't call it a triangle. Well, I mean, you could no, it's only his two sides. Oh, no, no, that's you shaded it a right angle. It's if it makes right you feel better to, to make it into a triangle and shade right it in, you absolutely may. It's a cute. You should feel free. I mean, it'll be right. Everyone it's adorable. <laughs> 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 
If you're cold, where should you go? <laughs> to the corner, because it's always what? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. <laughs> 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 That's so corny. Oh. <laughs> the worst job? Oh, that's the worst job. 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 Was it four characteristics of an image that we had to determine? Mm -hmm. oh, there was an acronym? Wow. Yes. Right. That's, That's the last thing we got. You are. On your paper, please. On my phone. Doesn't really matter where on it. Oh, All right, L stands for? Location. 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 How do we describe the location of the image? <laughs> Distance from the image. Distance from the Equation. This is from the mirror. This is from the mirror to the image. And what do we call that? D. I. So measure it. You have a ruler there, right? I want you literally to measure the difference on your picture, the distance from your mirror to your image. From the mirror or the theoretical? This should be the same at the principal axis. You're measuring at the principal axis, so this should be the same. 17.3. All right, so you all drew the same lines, right? Yes. And I think you were all being pretty careful. And you got a pretty wide spread of values here. This is why we're not actually going to measure these when it matters, right? Um, there's an equation that will calculate that will tell us where the image ought to be. But would you agree, based on these numbers, it's going to range? Did anybody get, any, get anything outside the range of 14.5 to 16.5? What'd you get? 17.9. I'm sorry, 14.5 to 17.5. 17.9. 18.5. 18.5. Right. Would you guys agree that 16.5 is kind of in the middle? Yes. That nobody's too far from 16.5? Should this number have a unit? Uh, centimeters. Centimeters, how do you know? Because you measure in centimeters. Great. What does A stand for? Attitude. And what is the attitude of this arrow? Inverted. S stands for? Size. How can we measure the size? Oh, you, you measure your arrow. Measure your arrow. Use your ruler. Measure your arrow. Which arrow? The big one. Why? Why are we measuring the big one? I was going to say the image arrow, but also the one we haven't measured yet is also a good answer. Two point eight. Two point nine. Yeah, I got two point five. No, again, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a range of answers here. No, that's wrong. But I want us to put I want us to change the answer slightly. I wonder, there's something else, there's something different I want you to do with that answer. Millimeters. Kilometers. Inches. Is it almost the same as the one we started with? No. Except greater than so it would it be two, it's greater than... Is it negative? Negative. Why is it negative? Because it's inverted. Because it's down instead of up. All right, so let's call it negative 2.8. Is that negative? Negative 2.8. 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 Negative 
see the image on a piece of paper. And if we have time, we might. Um, we're going to try this. Like the tree, but the tree was an image that was an infinite distance away. Well, infinite, for the sake of our little, of our little system. Okay. So obviously, drawing a picture and measuring the lengths is not going to give us as much precision as we want in terms of measuring our image distance. So what we need is the equation. There are two equations that we're going to use when it comes to both lenses and mirrors. The first one is the lens-mirror equation. I put this in notes if it were me. And here's the lens-mirror equation. One over F equals one over DI plus one over DO. Does this equation tell us everything we need to know? No. No. What is this equation not telling us? Um, um, the, the, um, the size. The size. <coughs> when I talked about the properties of the objects, I said we would measure size either by image height or by magnification. Magnification. Good. <laughs> is equal to the image height divided by the object height. It's also equal to negative image distance over object distance. So the farther the image is from the mirror, the larger it's going to be. These two equations are all we're going to need for mirrors and for lenses, for both kinds of mirrors and for both kinds of lenses. Okay, so let's do the actual calculation for this problem. Sure. What are we trying to solve for? Which distance? The image distance is what we're looking for. Now, I suspect that your math teachers would really like it if we found a common denominator of that fraction on the right and made it into one big fraction and then inverted both of them and then did whatever else we have to do in order to solve for di. I don't want to do it that way. I'm just going to cheat and put it in my calculator. Okay, I can so, grab your calculator. Please don't talk to What'd you get? 16.8. So, what is this answer? What is that answer? What is that number? How far we moved the That's the image distance. That's how far the image should have been from the mirror. How close did you get? Really close. Call block three. Oh, this is what I'm going to have to do. I was up point. In some cases, you'll be super, super close because you were super, super careful. In some cases, you'll be super, super close because you were super, super lucky. Right? Sometimes you can be really careful and still be off. Which is two centimeters, three centimeters? Two or three centimeters is definitely close enough at this point. Yeah. Based on the pictures I saw walking around, they look great. What do you call close on Thursday? What I call close on Thursday is probably two or three centimeters as well. I'm looking more for you knowing where the lines are supposed to go. Are we done here? Yes. What else should we calculate? We could do a percent difference. That'd be fun. But I was thinking of magnification. <laughs> what was the image distance? Um, 16.8. Great. What was the object distance? <coughs> so what's our magnification? Should we have a unit? No. If I rearrange this equation to solve for HI, what do I get? Hold on. 
Where did the 12 come from? Where did the 12 come from? That's our distance. That was the image distance I gave you, the object distance I gave you in the beginning. Yeah. You're looking for HI. How do we get HI? And what was HO? Um, two. Two. M was 1.4. HO was the, what, what is HO? The, the arrow. The arrow is what? Height. 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 The arrow's height. So it's like 2.0 something? Mm -hmm. 2.0 instead of 3.0. Nifty, right? Cool. So H I is like the first arrow that we do? No, H O is the first arrow. Okay. Oh, that's the object. And then H I is the image. Okay? Alright. We're gonna try something that might end badly, but we're gonna try it anyway. Okay? I need your mirror, the one with the shortest uh, focal length. I need you guys to clear off your desk, especially if anything flammable. Okay. All right, can somebody hold this? I can. Okay, we're going to we'll try to make it a little bit lower. I need somebody to hold the mirror. Where should the mirror be? You guys are going to want to stand up so you can actually see. What is, wait, hang on, where should the mirror be? Somewhere where you can see the light. It doesn't really matter whether it's to the right or the, okay, yeah. What do you think it should be? Good. Okay. But let's turn it the other way. I know I said we should do it, but we'll pretend like we're all on the right side. Great. So you're going to hold this up. You're going to make sure that this... Maybe you can hold the other end of this. Uh, all right. We're going to try this. We're going to see how successful it is. What are we trying? We're trying to actually see the actual image. Okay, so the focal length of this mirror is 7 centimeters. I did that calculation earlier. So, what should our object length be? Our object distance be? 12 centimeters. 12 centimeters. So, oh, hang on, don't move the, don't move the meter, meter stick. Well, the meter stick needs to be determined by the back of the mirror. Oh. Zero for the meter stick needs to be the back of the mirror. So move it this way, that way. Okay, back this way a little bit. That looks okay. perfect. All right, so let's put the candle at 12. Does that look like 12? Uh, a little bit closer. A little, a little closer. There you go. There you go. All right, so in theory, where should the card be to see the image? 12. Where? 12? 16.8, uh, right? That's what we just calculated. That's what I said. So 16.8 should be about here. And what do you see? An upside down flame? I don't know what upside down flame is. here's You're not going to get a really sharp image in part because the candle flame is flickering. Out here, it's a fuzzy mess. In here, it's a fuzzy mess. There's a point in here. Right there. Oh, cool. Oh, it's on the other side. Do you see it? You can see it on either side usually, because the light goes through the card well. Can you see it? And then what's our length up here? About 17.5. Probably because the, the focal point is not exactly at seven centimeters. That's just my guess. Cool, huh? Yeah. Isn't it nice when science works like it's supposed to? Thank you. Images from plane mirrors, hot mirrors, and images from concave mirrors. If you had to guess, what do you think we're going to learn about tomorrow? Convex. Convex mirrors. Also tomorrow, you're going to have some practice problems where you're going to do what we did today, but we're not going to do it all together as a group. When's your quiz? Thursday. Thursday. If you're leaving, yeah, if you're leaving the country early, what should you do? Tomorrow. Probably take it tomorrow. I'm happy to stay after school if you need me to. You can do it during class, but I won't have, like, you won't have practice, and I won't have shown you how to do the convex mirrors. And the convex mirrors are theoretically just the same, but they end up looking kind of different. You understand what I'm saying? What if you won't be here tomorrow? It's your call. So do what makes the most sense to you. You could take it in activity period or during class, but you will have missed that lesson. Yeah.